In this clip, we're going to learn how to add a card to a tracked plate. Okay, so this is where we left off in our last clip, and I wanna go ahead and kind of reorganize this. So I really don't need this point cloud uh, thing here. I'm gonna switch over to 3D for a second. So I just hover over the viewer and hit the tab key, and I double clicked my scene node to go ahead and open that up. So everything funneling into the scene you can see now. So the point cloud is just kind of this uh, set of little squares here, but it's not really giving me a whole lot to go off of. And I have another way that I can kind of get my robot into place. So I'm just going to delete that uh, point cloud. Now, I'm also going to take all of these nodes and bring them over here to the side. And this is where our merge happens for our robot. Before that, we don't have the robot. So pretty much everything right here, not including this stuff, so I'm just gonna shift select to grab that out, is what needs to funnel in. This would be our card for our robot to place him in here. So let's go ahead and add a card. So I'll hit the tab key and type in card. And then this will be the image input for the card. So now this image of the robot is going to be placed on our card. Now right now I don't really, here it is, I, I can see it but it's very small. And I'm just middle mouse clicking to kind of uh, pan around here. Okay, so I'm going to take the card and kind of push it forward a bit. And we also need to plug it into our scene. Now, all these dot nodes are making this a bit confusing, so let's simplify. We don't need our background to plug into our scanline render because we're actually going to merge that in lower so we can delete that. You don't need the background pipe always to be plugged in there. Um, and then you can leave this the way it is if you want. Basically what's happening is the camera that was created from the camera tracker is funneling into, kind of in the same way we have our little dot nodes over here, it's funneling down and into the scene and then it keeps going and is going into the camera pipe on the scanline render. So really you just need your object or scene plugged in here and the camera uh, into the scanline render. Now I'm going to switch these to go in um, this way, which is a little confusing that it, this data flows uh, this direction, but I'm going to do that because I want my card to be able to be lined up with my scene. So the scene, I can pull this little pipe out here. So this is pipe two into the scene. And now the card is actually flowing into that scene. So that just makes it easy for us to kind of have another input there. Now let's view the scanline render. So I'll select that and hit the one. And I need to come up here and hit tab again to see that 2D view. So this is where our card is sitting in space in relativity to our camera. So now we actually need this merge pipe that we had hooked up to our robot before to go into the scanline render. So now the result of the scanline render is going into the merge instead of just the image data we had for the card. So obviously this isn't right. Now I could kind of manipulate it and try to get it into just the right spot but the problem is that I'm never gonna have it just right, but Nuke has a solution. So whenever I select my camera tracker node, you can see all these little data points come back up. And what I can do is kind of just make a selection of these points in the area where I want the robot to be standing, and I'll right click, and I'll go to Create and choose Cube, and that made this little cube right here for me. It just popped it in and I'll plug that into the scene and now it sort of is creating a placeholder. Now in 2D space, it's hard for me to see, you know, what this is really pointing at. But let's hit the tab key and you can see that now we're getting a much better uh, view here. 
Now I'm going to um, rotate around here and zoom in a bit. And I'm just using those same uh, control, hold control and left click and drag to do that. Um, so let's grab our card and I'm just going to push it back about halfway through my cube and then kind of put it in the middle of the cube there. Now we'll unhook the cube so it's no longer connected into the scene and now we're just seeing the robot. So now let's jump back into our 2D view. This is another way you can do it without hitting the tab key. And now the robot is in the correct position, but he's too small. And our rotoscope that works down here is actually still on the image, whereas it should be on the result of the scan line. So that's this roto right here. See if I open it up now, it's kind of followed him. So what I need to do is pull that out and place it after the scan line render. So now you see it's uh, following along with the actual line of the ground here. So now I can go in with my card and start to play around with his scale and maybe a little bit in the X axis. So there's this uniform scale option, which is really the easiest to control it. You can uh, change the scale here if you like, but the uniform scale is nice because it's just, it's got them all uh, constrained proportionately, proportionately, so you don't have to go in X and Y individually. So I'm just going to kind of scoot him over here a little bit and I have him scaled up to about 2.35. So he's like a, almost two and a half times what he first was. And so I'm just moving him in X and Y, but not Z because that's the, that's the main placement I was looking for with that, with that, um, cube we had. So now I have him in place. My rotoscope is in the correct place in the flow. And we could go ahead and pull this down to make that a little bit nicer of a right angle. And let's go ahead and make sure we're viewing this merge. Actually, this is the one with the dog. So we're going to want to add the dog to its own card as well. But so let's actually view one above that. And let's just go ahead and play it. Now it's going to take a second for this to cache. So I'll pause and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so let's go ahead and view and you can see that the robot is sticking very nicely. Now I've taken a little bit of liberty. The bottom of his feet is right are, are right here. Um, and the bottom of our, our actress's feet are maybe just a little bit higher than that. Um, but since he is really large and we can't actually see the bottom of his feet, I think it's okay for it, us to take a little bit of liberty just so that the top of his head is in the position that we want. Now, I have him kind of starting off over to the right a little bit at the beginning of the shot and then he's moving more into the middle as the shot continues on, which I think is good because if we had him too close to her, the dog would feel out of place once we add him in as a card as well. So how would we go about adding the dog? Well, it's very similar to what we just did. Um, now, the only issue is that if you want to have control over the robot um, in the color or something like that, it might be a little bit more difficult by to just have one scan line render. So I'm talking about with the robot in place, let's say we want to add some post effects later. Um, that might be difficult if this dog is going into the same scene and being affected by the ro with the robot from the scan line render and effects we might add later on. So one of the tricky things is that sometimes you actually have to create another system. Now this isn't too big of a deal really. So normally what I do is I'll just select those nodes and I can hit control K 
okay to clone. Now, some of these nodes won't allow you to clone. So um, you can see the camera isn't allowing me to clone it. Um, so what I can do, though, is go into the camera tracker again. And let's open that up. And just we'll just create a camera. So it will still be a linked output. We just aren't creating it as a clone. So this one, uh, it's getting a little bit trickier, but that is okay. I'm going to just go ahead and move this down a bit. And then we'll have a camera over here. And then we'll, we can create a scene. Then all of the same um, nodes that we just created from our camera tracker node can be created that just by adding them in. Now, I do want to create a copy of this card, not a clone. So I'll just hit control C, control V. And then we can pump the card into the scene. And we want the camera to come in here. And then the scene would be connected there. And then the scan line render will become the result. So let's unhook our little dog node tree. And let's pull this down maybe a bit here. And then right there was where we had that. This is our last uh, node here. So then that will be the image for the card. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so perfect. That's the dog on the card. Now he's not going to be viewed at the same time as the robot, but trust me, having you know these two systems is going to work better for us. And then we just want our A pipe that we had plugged into the dog imagery, now plugged into the scan line render. And we can view now that merge. Now, I'm going to take the same roto that we have over here and let's go ahead and copy or actually let's clone it. So control K. Oh, it won't let us clone a roto. So we'll just go ahead and create a copy. So if we do end up making a change, we would need to do that. Now, it did allow us to create a clone of the pre-mult, which Actually, we don't need to be a clone really because we're not changing any kind of settings there and it just kind of creates an unnecessary cluttered looking line. So we just need to do the same thing where we plug our roto and our pre mult in between the scan line render and the merge so that now the dog is having that same little line cut off. Um, now we do need to adjust the roto a bit because the lens distortion ended up being slightly different. So our roto was not perfect, but we can do that in between lessons. So now all I need to do is just take the card for the dog and I'm going to go back to the beginning when the dog is actually sitting up and just move that card into place. So a little bit closer to our girl here. And then let's kind of see just clicking through what that looks like. Maybe just a bit higher. And the roto is really throwing me off because it's so low. So this is a temporary placement. Um, I may play around with that a little bit more. Just don't move it in the Z axis. You can move it around in the X and Y as needed to make it look like the dog is by her side. But he needs a little bit of color correction and the roto needs some cleaning up. So I'll work on the roto between lessons and then we'll come back in our next uh, clip and we'll go ahead and start messing around with the read geo note. That's something that I want to show you is a possibility when you're working in 3D space like this.